You feeling lazy? I'm feeling lazy. You feeling smart? I'm feeling lazy. (laughs) (laughs) It is the Lazy Gardeners with that guy. He's feeling, well, twice lazy. Bobby Jensen and yours truly, BT. I echo his sentiments. I was just putting it out there for the sake of argument. Well, we're trying. Well, you know, this is our, like, we're early morning. We're we're doing an early morning one today, so I think it's... Bloody Mary time. <laughs> so I just mix up this little bloody here, and I'm ready to go. Usually it's the pop top of a well, cool one, a it, cold I'm one. not as young as I used to be. No, a, a, a beer, a cigarette, and you know, Cheetos in the morning is not is no longer there. That that used to be a part oh, of the daily. Oh, it's perfect. Oh. Uh, cold pizza, yeah. something like that. You know? um, I, I use two words to describe what that used to be. Every morning. Yeah. That, uh, two, just two. <laughs> Two simple two words. Two simple words, yeah. <laughs> Give me it, a... it, it's like wearing a tutu. Well, I used I used to, and I still call that, just Saturday morning. But, right, you know, just Saturday from, morning. Right aside from that, exactly. yeah, we're going down a path that I don't want to add any but more days exactly. of the week to. Okay? <laughs> There's special days every day in my life. Welcome to the Lazy Gardeners. We're here to give you tips, smart tips. That's why I brought the word up, but, you know, lazy tips so you can spend your time in the garden, enjoy your time in the garden, and have more time on the side for that Bloody Mary or that uh, cold one, whichever cold one or hey, warm or could, hot one you choose. It could be water. could be lemonade. Indeed. And whatever. I was outside the other day, by the way, uh, as we've had a stretch of nice autumn, autumn-like weather. Be, and, yep. It, and I was drinking in the middle of the day. I was just having some nice, warm, hot green tea. But it just I never would do that. I would never would have done that a week ago. I mean, it would a week have been, ago was 95 degrees. Exactly. And, but it was just nice being outside mm-hmm. in the afternoon, just enjoying a nice tea and, uh, and it matching the, the tone and the temperature of the day. It was great. So was it the, do you think the dog days of summer have just passed? No, I think we still got some I think we're coming. getting I coming. Think, I think September and uh, October. Late, o- late and, August, September. Yeah, yep. We're going to yeah. get some, some warm days. For but sure. this, I tell you what, the last couple of days, I could live here. Hey, what are you reading about the El Nino? I mean, they're expecting, you know, perhaps a, a record-setting El Nino, and that could mean a lot of uh, rain in California, which is needed. Which but is it, good. It'll cause a lot of flash flooding, though. At That's this the point. problem right now. It's yeah. a runoff. It's not. They're not filling the reservoirs as it would. It's yep. not sinking into the aquifers. Yep. It's just running off and causing a lot of problems and making its way into places where it can't be used. Exactly. Right. Right. Um, but it would mean, generally speaking, a warmer uh, setting for uh, for us, you know, winter wise. Here, yeah, in I don't this know. Area. Yeah, they say, and I guess it's true. But you know, I, I don't trust weather. Yeah, you know, <laughs> sorry, Bell. I don't sorry, trust. Bell, weather. I don't trust weather. They say this. They say, you know, it's El Nino, and then we yeah. get freezing cold and twenty five inches of snow in a day. Yeah, know? exactly. So, what are we supposed but, to believe? No, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't I don't think about weather anymore. I've been outside too long for my life now. Working out in the, you know Just deal with it as it it's comes. There. There's yeah. nothing you can do about it. You yeah. know? It drives me crazy. People that get crazy, but what are you gonna do? Yeah. Just just make it happen. The, you know, no matter what your day you know, is like, make something happen. Yeah, you can't it, you can't control it. Yeah. If you can, you got a good gig yeah, going, that's right, you baby. Some, you got a few dollars coming you, you down can, the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could make some money on bets. It's you like can. having that next to, day's edition of the newspaper yeah. the day before. Hey, you could, you could show up at a drought stricken well, area and say, you know, for a couple of bill, I'll make it rain for a well, week. A TV show like that wasn't it called First Edition? I think yes, where the yeah, guy right. got the newspaper the day the early, day, the day yeah. early, yeah. and he could save the day, or you know, he he chose to be benevolent. Bet the horses. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'd be doing. But he chose to like save lives and be a kind and gentle person. Yeah, okay, well, okay, whatever. Well, we pal. know we know, we would do a little of that. Oh yeah, but I would not make a bet on the Mets every yeah, day or something like that. Yeah, you could find or you know, or you'd bet them to lose. You know, the, whatever. Yeah, I know what's you'd going still, on. You still make the bet, but one way or the other. You know, but yeah, you, you're right. You got to deal with the weather as it comes and take advantage of it as it comes because we had those nice soaker rains over the last week or so. Um, I think you can still see a little bit on my right hand because that was my weed pulling hand. Anyhow, we got back from an event uh, over the weekend and the nice rain was falling. Easy and, to pull and, weeds. Exactly. And I had another hour or two before bedtime but while there's still some light. And I, th- I thought, I'm going to put my gardening shorts on and get my you know grubby shoes on and, and then put the leather gloves on and get out there and pull some weeds. And uh, the tannins from that leather glove, you know, everything got really wet. Right, right. And I'm squeezing because I'm pulling on the stems yep, and all yep. of that. And sure enough, and it's not the first time that happened to me. You but, had but I had orange you know, palms, or, orange yellow palms. Yeah, you can there still you see it just a little yeah. bit right about there. This but is, it lasted a couple of days. This is 
radio. Yeah. Well, they can't know. see it. You, no, you can. Oh, no, I can. Yeah, yeah no, you can I confirm can. it. Yeah. Yes. See, I, oh, so the I'm wish. confirming. Sure, okay, just right it. about there. I got yeah. It. But it's funny. It's like a tattoo. You know, one of those temporary tattoos. It. Ta- <laughs> you can't wash it off the first time. It right, takes it about takes a day or two just to wear away. But it was great getting out there and getting those weeds out because yeah, they just yank out so easily. You can get that full tap root out and the whole nine yards. So while you were out there pulling weeds, and I commend you for because you know every weed you pull now is probably worth ten next year yeah so pulling weeds at this time of year or doing any weed work at this time of year is is very beneficial but do you notice anything do you have any blank spots you know this is the time of year where things are starting to you know run their course and now all of a sudden you've got blank areas in your yard yep. or you need color or this color is fading so fall is a great time fall is a time you know we all go to the garden center in the spring and we buy everything we want in the spring. And you think you got everything then. Well, but you, fla- you, buy- you flock. Hey, we, yeah. buy, we buy color, baby. Yeah, oh, of course. You know what I mean? So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, August, boom, you got nothing. No color, right. You got no color. So there are a lot of nice fall-blooming plants out there. And I'm not talking about chrysanthemums, you know. All right, yeah, chrysanthemums, they're fine. That's and, the standard. And here, we, you know, in Minnesota... We've developed some, the U has developed some amazing chrysanthemums, some perennial chrysanthemums. Really hardy ones big with ones, great color. They grow, spread, yeah. you know, really. Those big potted mums you bunch, see. For some reason, a bunch of them were uh, maroon and gold. I just don't get it. <laughs> I was so amazed. How did that, how did that happen? That, hey, here's mm. our new one. It's maroon and gold. This one's golden maroon. <laughs> <laughs> we got to label it differently, right. right? But, you know, I mean, there's so many things out there. I mean, asters, which is, I think asters are starting to get to be a little bit more common. Yeah. You know, but anything that really, this is their time of year. Rutabecchia grows like crazy at this time of year. I mean, it's growing all summer, but it shines at this time of year. This is when it, I really think it, it, uh, it, this is when it's at its peak. It's just gorgeous. So think about what you're doing out there. And there are so many different ones that you can do. Fill in the areas. With Take color. a look at it. Yeah. Take a look at it. Where are you missing? Where is it lacking? I mean, plants like turtle head. Turtle head, and the reason it's called turtle head because it's the little flower looks like looks a little like a turtle, turtle head yeah, poking out there. What a concept! Mm-hmm. And it's 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 controllable. It doesn't spread like crazy, and it's got like a beautiful pink color, and it starts blooming mid August. Oh, that's beautiful, and, and it's gorgeous. So there are many many plants that you can do now, put in in the spring. That bloom now and make your garden look much better. Now, how about planting now and then having them ready for next year? So, are we talking a lot of these are annuals or a lot of them no, are those perennials? Are, these are, I know the ones you mentioned perennial. are all, the ones you all mentioned yeah. are perennial. But, I mean, uh, maybe the only one which in this part of the world it's not used as much, but when you get a little bit south, perennial uh, pansies. Oh, sure. Okay. Which go in now. Yep. You know, and then their winters aren't so harsh, and whether they fade down or not, they do come back. Can you can you put some uh, nice coating on there? Some, some mulch or something some mulch, like that. Yep. Or like I know in, in our area, you might be able to get away okay. with that. Yeah. You might be able to because I know a one, shot. I know one of your uh, great lazy gardening techniques is when you got the uh, when you got the plastic bags going or the storage bags or whatever with the garden leaves, uh, fill them up about a third of the way, halfway, so they're not super heavy. Right. But then just twist that thing around and lay, lay that on that bed. Right. You know, so that it creates that layer. A couple of rocks, maybe, mm-hmm. just to hold it in place. Yeah, just to hold it in place, yeah. A lot and of, you're making compost at the same time. Yeah, exactly, in the bag. In a bag. Um, a lot of folks, of course, uh, aren't doing that with the plastic as much because the whole narrative now is the reusable, uh, what am I trying to say, brown paper bags. Right, I, almost said car- I almost said cardboard. but right, you know, it's the, not the, reusable, the, the compostable. it's recyclable. Well, recyclable and compostable in some right, cases. Right. But, uh, but I, well, I reuse them all the time. I mean, my mom uses those. And, oh, really? And, and uh, uh, you know, we'll get a couple, three uses out of them. If she's careful not to put any big sticks in there or something that pokes it through, you know, because right. what I'll do is I'll haul them off. I do this with my mom's uh, yard, my yard. Because I got a pickup truck and we've got that compost site. She's in Crystal, I'm in New Hope. We've got that compost site in Maple Grove that services that part of Hennepin County. And you uh-huh. can, as a resident of any number of cities, you can just dump. haul your stuff there yeah. and get free compost when you're there, which is Black awesome. Black gold, baby. Yeah. So you can load up on the compost on the backside, but moreover, get those leaves, get those sticks, 
you know, garden waste, all that kind of stuff. Old soil, they accept all that stuff. But yeah, I'll get reuse out of those bags for moms because then she doesn't have to buy anymore. So you 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 you, ca- you cart it with that and pour it out and just pour it out. Yep. Okay, and yep. then just put the bag back as yep. long as it's not wet. Yep, as long as it's not long wet, as it's exactly. not wet. and not right. some big tears. You know, right. like I said, right. from sticks and stuff. Right. But right. me, I use the four mil. Constru- contractors bag <laughs> plastic bags <laughs> <laughs> and those I get multiple use out of those and then even with even with getting a tear in the plastic I'll dry those rascals out and then I'll take some packing tape and just seal up those big tears or small tears or whatever just so I get even more additional use out of them and so I I've, I think I've got some plastic bags some of those four mil bags that I get at Fleet Farm that um uh, I've had some of them, I think, for three or four years yeah, at this see, point. That, that's you know? good. Mm-hmm. That's, that, that's recycle, reuse. Yep, yep. I mean, that's the idea. The idea is not once and throw it away. No, absolutely. And I, it always bothers me. I know me. you do. Yeah, those, you do. Those, those thinner plastic bags that are the yeah. garden and leaf bags, you know, the plastic ones, and, and the notion that uh, those would be used once. And, you know, it just always bo- it just we, bugs we me. We are a used once uh, society, society, you know. Yeah. It's just yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, use... You know, I get crazy oh, when you speak of plastic bags, Ziploc bags. Yeah. I mean, buy a container. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you can put it in a container, you wash it, you yeah. reuse it. You know, keep some Ziplocs around for, for when something. that's what you need. For something, when I catch my crappie, I just mm-hmm. got to put them in a Ziploc yeah. bag. But yeah. to put everything that you do in your, that you cook, that you make, that you left over, it just doesn't make sense. I like to take lunch to work every I day. I take it every day yeah. myself. And so I decided a while ago to get out of the Ziploc thing. To just buy a little bit bigger, soft-sided lunch bag, and then yeah, I, I put one of one. then I put one of those uh, cold freezer packs in the bottom, mm-hmm. just keeps everything a little chilly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, then I, I'll put my sandwich in a container. I'll put you know whatever the the celery stalks, I got and the carrot I got sticks, all different you know, sizes. Just little container. They're kind of they're narrow and thin or whatever, and so they all stack together nicely. And and then I'm not and then I'm not uh, throwing away all the ziplocs. Potato, zucchini. String bean, eh, maybe carrots stew today. Oh, nice. It's like a nice red sauce. Mm. Mm. So you and I are on the same page here, Lazy Gardener partner, because I made a chili the other night. I, I decided to make a fresh garden chili. So here we are, Lazy Gardening. So uh, uh, t- tomatoes, of course, uh, green and yellow peppers, of course, uh, some jalapeno peppers. But also I, I tossed in, uh, it's just delicious. I decided to take a chili recipe that I like and then morph it a little bit because I like corn, the sweet corn a lot. Yeah, yeah, you know? it's perfect too now. And so uh, what I did was uh, took three ears of sweet corn, cooked them in advance, let them cool, and then uh, sliced those off into the chili. But then I put the corn cobs in the chili, and they smurgled in there with everything while it was all That's cooking. That's a technical cooking term, Shmurgling. Shmurgling. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Shmurgling. And then, uh, and then those cobs started leaching out that nice corn milk, and then I lifted each one up and then scraped the cob. Ooh. So I really got all the rest of that corn kernel. You know, you can't yeah, yeah, cut yeah, it all the out. End of it, the end so, of it. you know, boom, I'm getting all that, and then all that nice corn milk. I've never just heard it corn, into. cold corn milk, but I know what you're talking about. And then about. it was it added a creamy texture to the chili, so it added that base, and then some some corn flavor that was just uh, not so much pronounced, but in the mix of the chili, and it was delicious. So I'll share that recipe. I'll make sure I share that. He's recipe a foodie, through the folks. Site, you know, he is a foodie. But anyhow, we got similar, you know, similar lunches. Well, going think on about today. the time though. I mean, this this is harvest time, man. It's, right. You go to whether it's yours or you go to a a, a market. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm going to definitely head to a farmer's market this weekend because I want to start getting some canning in. You know, we yeah. have a landscape garden at our house, so we don't do a lot of the vegetables. You know, some, but well, not a lot. Vegetables take a lot of room. That's, yeah, they you know, do exactly. They take a lot of room. And I did some. You know, we did some potted stuff this year and got some nice maters going and things like that. But uh, yeah, I want to get it. You know, buy that case of really good tomatoes. I want to buy that case of really good green beans. I want to buy all that stuff and really get some stuff and going squash this weekend. It up. Yeah, and make it all happen. So there's another plant I want to talk about. It's got my favorite name of almost all plants, Joe Pie Weed. Joe Pie Weed. You've mentioned that one before. I love yeah. Joe but Pie. But what do you know the origin of the name or anything? No, or, I don't. Yeah. But okay. we should look it up sometime. Yeah, but okay. Joe Pie Weed, you see it. It's it's on the sides of roads. Yeah. It's a tall plant. It's got like this cluster of mauve, beautiful pinky mauve flowers. And then some of the newer hybrids are a little shorter, a little okay. tight. Don't look as weedy. But again, another one for a backdrop at this time of year, unbelievable. And this is when it's blossoming. This, this is, is when it's well, it coming. blossoms most of the summer. But 
it stays now. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't doesn't collapse quickly. It stays up. But I, you know, it's like I just like to say it, Joe Pye. Joe Pye weed. And who was Joe Pye? That's we're gonna put that we're out there. We're gonna find that out. Um, does this one reseed itself too? So yeah, I mean, it's, it's dropping spreads. those seeds. It and, yeah. Is it, it is it spreadable like uh you it's know like super, like a problem or or well you can yank them could, out. You, you can know, I, I, you can yank them out if I you get know, too many. It's, it's approaching invasive. Okay. You know, right. It spreads, but beautiful plant. I, yeah. I, you know, there's so many things. There's so many different plants out there that... Joe Pye you know, weed. Joe, uh, Joe yeah, Pye. there's no question about that. You know, there's false, peren- false sunflower. There's the perennial sunflower. There's so many things that this is their time. So in your garden, take a look what's missing or where there's a hole or where something fades. Yep. Remember what we talked about last week? Take a picture. That's right. You know, you got panoramic, video. I mean, think about what you can do now with your cell phone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And just store that and have a folder on the phone, the photos folders, and just set it up and put garden on there, garden 2015, so that you remember what year. Well, so when you're riding around or walking around on your walks and you see somebody did something very cool. This would look good in this part. Click. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, even, you know, we were down at the Arboretum the other day and we we took a panoramic of a garden. Think about that in the old days. You would take like eight pictures and tape them together. <laughs> right? And they'd be all sorts of cockeyed oh, and you'd almost that, match. That was stuff. one of my favorite things right. to do. You know, and then you'd have to have the yeah. mark on the left side of the frame and right. you'd go, okay, now I'm going to where the pole is, snap, right. and now I'm gonna go to where right. the bush is. And then snap. that little white thing was there and yeah. you'd But now with panoramic, man, you can take a whole garden it's in amazing. one shot. Yeah. So don't forget to use that. I mean it's a tool. I'm not a great phone freak. But for that tool, for that, for what it can do, what it can do, even video, you can take right. video because you can narrate what you're seeing, so you'll really help remember, right. you know, what's going on with that. It's video. a magic time. Yeah, it yeah. really is. So take a look at what's missing from your garden. It is the time of year where things are starting to wane, and you know, hey, there's stuff out there that'll take a frost that'll go farther. It'll just extend your season. Yeah. Now you mentioned the Joe Pye weeds. Joe Pye. Same things going on, like you said. They bloom and then they continue and they really start thriving at this time the sunflowers that are going out there everybody that's deadheading sunflowers man i'm seeing them just continue to go go deadheading is good go 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 because those sunflowers and i love sunflowers we got some in the i know you do and uh, the more you take that big seed head off there after the flower blossoms that flowers you get that energy just starts pumping up that stem again and one of our stems it, it just freaked me out because it did have a big Big flower on top, and I trimmed that one off, and another one off to the side. Got that one done when it had cycled through, and uh, and then I just I toss them out there in the area where the squirrels can get at them, and they love them, you know, so they're eating them, and they don't climb up in my bird feeder as much then, but they get they get their opportunity to have some food. But that one stem, every place that there's a leaf coming out, there's a new a shoot, new shoot coming yep. out, new flower coming yep. out. It was just freaky, yeah, yeah. It's uh, well. You, uh, Especially, that's another thing you should be thinking about at this time of year. Getting rid of old dead stuff that's in there, yeah. pruning up like we were just talking. You've got a path you want to clean up. Go ahead, do this it. It's the time to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Time to do it. I mean, is there a way to assess what may be disease at this time and really get an idea of this plant or this part of this plant is failing? And if so, you know, trim off the nasty stuff. But should you mitigate more than just that? Um, should you try? Repotting the plant, or you know, getting in there. Sometimes you have to trim root balls a little bit. Sometimes, sometimes it's it's what the disease is. Okay, you know what I mean. If yeah. you got if you got something that's topical that happens just because of heat, or you know, a lot, air movement's a big deal. You know what I mean? It's true. Too crowded, too grown together, yep. Yep. and it doesn't get the air movement. And you'll get some funguses. You'll get some little disease on it. The biggest thing with anything like that is get rid of the leaves. Okay. Don't because most of it is spores, and you lay it in the ground, and it comes back again next year. Sure. So cleaning your garden up, cleaning those diseased leaves up, and getting them out before they melt into the ground. And so get them off the ground. Get them off the ground. Yeah. Get them. Yeah. Get them. You know, you can put them in a compost pile, hundred and ninety degrees or whatever it gets in there kills yeah, just about everything. Mm-hmm. You know. So I mean, the excellent time to do that. Excellent. This is a great time now. You know, especially when we hit a nice cool day. Yeah. To get out there and look and see where you're at, what you've done, and like you said, maybe there's stuff you need to take care of or get rid of. You could have something in there and say, you know, it's just not working. Yeah. It's okay. One, The one cut prune is not a bad pruning, you know. Yeah. Just cut it, get it out, dig it out, and put something else that, you know, success is the whole idea. It's not, 
you don't have to it doesn't have to make it yeah you know what i mean it doesn't have to it might not then do something else. Then try something else, yeah. Something Let else. serendipity take its course. In the Lazy Gardeners Initiative, I want you to go off on a tangent. Let's get to more more plants that will fill in the fall color in just a second. But you brought up composting. I did, too, when we were talking about the Hennepin County compost site I go to. But having one in your own backyard is definitely a lazy gardener's technique on a couple of levels. First off, you can take some of that garden waste and things that are coming off the, the ground, as you said, leaves that need to go somewhere, and you're not bagging them up. And you're not taking them somewhere or putting, putting them out them to the front. The co- in a- or not putting them in the front of the driveway. You've right. got a compost service or whatever. Uh, you're just eliminating that step and you're getting it in your own compost pile. And then side part two of that is instead of going to uh, Fleet Farm, Depot, Menards, or wherever you buy this stuff, you're not buying bags of compost. You're, you're getting it right out of your own pile and, and using it on your garden. So, And you know what I think. It's, it's got microbes. It holds moisture. It, it's the best thing you could possibly put back into your soil. There's nothing better than compost. It's actually rejuvenating your soils yep. that fertilizers, because they have a lot of salt in them, kill off all the you know, microbes and worms and things that used to be in our soils. Yeah, that you need to that have That you need. There. You yeah. don't need, you know, things kind of, what, what did I read the other day? It was like, you know, thir- three, 13, 13,000 years we've been gardening. Yeah. And we've used fertilizers for like the last, you know, 60 100, years. Yeah, yeah, 60, right. You know, right. we did okay without it before mm-hmm. that. You know, and just was, recycling nature. That's yeah, what, That's what it's all about. You know, fixing nitrogen by planting a field of clover, and then, then you can plant plants there again. There and it is. people had figured this stuff out a long time ago. What's your favorite type of composter? I mean, do you, are there some systems out there that you like, or, or just building? Well, you know, there are. There the barrels you can twist, yeah, you know, so. Yeah. Have you seen some of these, and lazy. do you like some, you know, it, more it, than it, others, it, you know? You know, it's just a lazy way of doing it. Yeah. You're not out there with a shovel every once in a while or a turning, pitchfork yeah. and turning it. Man, I just, you know, it take three or four pallets, make a square, yeah. throw it in that. It's got air, It's got a way air can get in there. You know, you need some brown, you need some green, you need all of that, throw it in there. But there's a lot, you know, you can just buy like a plastic sheet that rolls out yeah. that, you know, attaches amongst us, makes a barrel with holes in it so that the air gets in. They're okay, but I don't, you know, it's not hard to make a compost pile. The one that I have is a smaller, sits on the ground black unit. And frankly, I don't remember where I got it. If I purchased it or if it was one of these deals, and I think it was what I'm getting at here, is that the county came around and they had uh, an initiative for a while where you could buy one for like five bucks. I mean, they made them really affordable is what it was. And so I said, yeah, I'm going to get one, you know. And it was just one of those snap together assembly things. And then you, you put it out there. And it's okay, but the thing that you mentioned with, you know, pallets or whatever you decide to construct or buy, what I didn't like and still don't like about it is that not enough air circulation happens. In in yours. There. There's not enough venting on this. And I right. get in there, and it's not super big. It's three by three maybe, the opening, mm-hmm. and stands about three feet tall. So it's a cube like that. But it's a little difficult to get in there with my fork and just turn it every now and again. And then even with that said... The circulation of air, and you, you don't have, think you get enough. I'm not getting enough. Yeah, yeah, no, and I don't think it's it's. I'm still getting you know some compost out of it, but not. It doesn't break down quite at the end of it all. You know, there's still chunks. Yeah, in see, there. that's some good. Right? Yeah, that's I mean, it's still usable, but it's not as usable doesn't, as I want it, it to be. It doesn't do what it naturally does yeah. to its, yeah. to the extent you need it. Yeah. So it, it, again, that fine. air circulation that's that's a big part of and, what you're looking you know, for. Throw here. a little nitrogen in there. Mm-hmm. A little nitrogen. Yep, I've done that. Blood meal. Blood meal. If you want to go organic. Yep. Pure seven zero zero. Yep, I put that in there too, and then you know, water it every now and again, yep. cover it, you know, turn yep. it. But uh, anyway, I think I'm going to switch it it's, up because I need a little more. Right. You know, that's, I want a little more. You know, that, and that's the reason those barrels became in existence. It's like you just said, it's a little work. Yeah. You know, and we seem to not want to do a little work yeah, sometimes. Exactly. And that's, so, that's okay. the initiative of the show here. There but, it is. But again, uh, sometimes a little work means. Uh, oh, in the, the benefit long, in, in the, the long, long run, run, the benefit's just amazing. Yeah, and so that's what the that's what the show's initiatives and, and narratives are about. And so maybe maybe a little more work on the compost thing is going to be a worthwhile thing for our I podcast see. listeners. There's, I think it's going to be for me. There's no question about it. Yeah. It's the best thing you can do for you to bring bring back your soil back to what it, bring it back to the earth that it used to be. Black gold, baby. Yeah. Got any more plants that we should uh, talk well, about? Well, you know, fall? everyone goes crazy. Well, spots. sedum, of course, sedum. Okay. Everyone knows sedum. It's 
it's out there. There's low growing sedum, you know, and there's stone crop and there's, there's different ones. There's great colors, you know, usually in the, the red to bright purple, you know, and they grow all season and this is their time. Another one that gets people crazy when you say it is goldenrod. But it's not the one that everybody gets. The hay fever one. It's not one. the hay yeah. fever one. It's a whole different one. But it's big, beautiful yellow at this time of year. Is it related to the weed yeah, one? I believe, I mean, it, I would I think believe so. it is. Yeah. But it's not, it's not the one that gets you the... Uh, so these have been cultivars that have been yep. developed that, that bring all that. Because the goldenrod flower, I mean, yeah. it's, a, you know, it's a wild flower. It's a Minnesota right. native wild plant. And it, it is a pretty... You know, the wild one that even causes you to sneeze is a pretty plant. It it's is a, a pretty, pretty plant. plant. But, you know, there's some new ones uh, fireworks golden fleece i think is All another right. one and and it's just not the same you know it's it's the 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 native ones kind of collapse and these are more sturdy they they're stand more it. upright okay they're more the upright. stems are a little more they're solid. thicker mm -hmm. and solid you know so think about it go to the garden center go to wherever and ask you know again Couple more weeks, you're getting some good buys too. Yeah, you are. And again, farmers markets, uh, they have you're going to find a lot of those vendors out yeah. there, not just the, the case of tomatoes narrative that I put out there. No, you're going to find a lot of plants that are still out there. The, uh, the Minnesota uh, hibiscus and, uh, and hyacinth world, uh, you know, speak to that because some of these are really beautiful plants. Well, you know, the hardy hibiscus, which is a total different thing, it's like the size of a dinner plate. Yeah. Um, needs a little protected area, comes up slowly so people get crazy, but all summer long you get a flower that's probably... Just, yeah, salad plate size, yeah, sometimes it, dinner plate size. Unbelievable. Great bold colors, almost almost any color you can think of. Fabulous plant. And, you know, you know what I think of hydrangeas. Yeah. They are the number one plant sold now. I said hibiscus, and that's what I meant right. to say. Yeah. yeah. They're the number one plant. They're just... The, the And even our local nursery, which is in a really is a national local nursery, mm -hmm. Bailey's have come up with some colors, some red, some fading, the strawberry shortcake. and sh It's just the, the things that they do now. Plus, it's a great plant. It'll take, it doesn't take full shade and it doesn't take full sun. That's what people do wrong. Can't be in a hot sun and it can't be, everybody thinks it's a shade-loving plant. Well, it's more of a Dappled loving Dappled plant. sun plant. Half okay. a day kind mm -hmm. of sun, you know, morning maybe. And and the big key to keep them flowering is it's hydrangea, water. When they dry out, leave them alone. If you're in a drought situation, yeah, water them. But what happens is people water them, water them, water them, and they're, they, they get more vegetative than anything else. Okay. And there's some that melt right back down to the ground, you know, and there's some that are woody. Okay. So the woody stem ones, you can pretty much, they're a shrub. And the other ones are a shrub, but they're more like a herbaceous shrub. They they melt back down to the root system every year. Got it. And those, you know, those are a little bit more difficult, but they're getting better and better. You know, again, Bailey's has done a great job with them, starting with the Endless Summer Series. And now they have another whole Bloom Series that is just fabulous colors. Great useful plant. You see it more and more. It used to be the old grandmother plant. You right. Know, well, be, like spireas. Right. You, Especially you the, white, the white bridal uh, spireas. Bridal is just yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. it's beautiful. It's not, one of my favorites. Yeah. I'm, one of my favorites. I'm not a big spirea guy. You know? No, but that one. That one is yep. outstanding. I'm totally with you. It's I'm totally with The pink ones and the sort of yeah, mauve no, no, no. ones, they're okay, yeah, but I'm not a fan. And they got abused. And they're super, and they're super hardy. That's why you right. see them always planted in right. uh, landscapes like right. in parking lots. It's easy. And, you it's know. Easy. And areas where if it gets right. a little uh, covered up and, and, right. and trampled on, <laughs> and, they, and they, it's they crazy. Up. I like two of them: Little Princess, which is the smallest small one, one, yeah, and then and then the big bridal wreath, which when it's weeping and it's in full bloom in, yeah. in early spring, fabulous plant. So let take let you know we keep saying it, but let's take a look at your garden so you've got more enjoyment out of it next year. And you're correcting the problems now, so as a lazy gardener, yep. you don't have the same problems next year. All right, so here we are, middle, late August. Before we close out the show today, let's talk about lawns for a quick second. Where should we be with you know lawn fertilizing, seeding, anything like that? Because uh, first off, I think you know we want to reiterate, you set that blade at its highest height right now, especially more than any other time, right, because the you, August heat and the September heat we're going to get. And then you, as you get to your last, you lower it. Lower it, but we're still about, at that time where the... Uh, Late We're lightning. always yeah. up. I'm yeah. always yeah. up three and a half, four inches. Yep. That's that's lush is the word you get out of that. Sure. You get more leaf. You don't get stem. 
it, it's the best thing to do. Well, you're getting the greatest, the, this is the best time, hot days, cool nights. Yep. So this is a great time to rejuvenate your lawn. And what that means for you is different for everybody. Okay, one, you may need to aerate. Good time to aerate your lawn. So get out there, you aerate it. Put your seed down. But you have to make, a lot of times you have to think about what you want to do here. You know, you want to kill the weeds that are existing in your lawn. You can't really put, you can put grass seed down, but you can't once it starts growing to kill. Yep. Because then you'll, you'll have an issue. And if you're, if you're organic, the best way to fight weeds is a good, thick lawn. Sure. Weeds like it, hot and dry, open spaces. Our grasses like a cool, you know, moist area. So if you've got a good lawn, you're not going to have a lot of weeds. So make that determination, but mix up some some grass seed, throw it around, get it in the soil right now because, you know, and, and I think you read the books and it says by the end, mid-September, you can't do it anymore. Yeah, things are changing. Yeah. You We're, gotta, you uh, gotta take an idea. You gotta, yeah. you gotta know your area. You gotta know what the season's been like or, or doing because, you know, we're hotter longer. Yeah. We're, we we seem to go deeper into into the fall now, so used to be do it right now, right now, middle of August. But I don't know if middle of August works anymore. I might wait a week or two yeah, to do so it. Or first part of September, maybe. Yeah, when sure. it's cooler. Mm-hmm. I mean, the best thing you do, you, what you don't have to worry about is out there beating it with water because it's ninety five degrees. Yeah, it's eighty degrees. It's seventy two degrees. The, the soil temperature is at its peak. It's nice and warm now, which is going to help those seeds which helps germinate the seeds quickly germinate, and right. do their job. And yeah. then. Do every morning enough moisture to keep everything around. Water it, you know, once a day or something, just to give it the moisture. Or if you got some really hot beating sun, make Maybe sure you more. get out there another one Maybe after more. you get home from Maybe work more. or whatever the case may be. Right. Keep there, those seeds moist, though. You bring up a good point. There are no rules. You yeah. can't tell you water it twice a day. Well, if you got southern facing sloped soil, you might water a lot more than twice a day yeah. because that's not retaining the water. But if it's if, in the shade or who in knows, the shade what? maybe it's once a day, or mm-hmm. once every other day. So mm-hmm. you know, you need to. Think about what you're doing. Don't don't believe everything, even what we say. Yeah, it's your micro environment. It's your environment. Learn, understand, ask questions. But what works for you can work for you, and not for somebody else. And thinking about what you're doing is a lazy gardener's way of doing things, because then you're not going to do it twice. We hate or twice. in the case of we watering, you know, why why would you water twice why would a day you, if you only need it once or once every other day? Why so would you drag a hose it? out there mm-hmm. and take the time? I mean, it's just a matter of fact of being smart about what you're doing, which gives you a whole bunch of time to do other things. Have a great gardening weekend, Bobby Jensen. Thank you, sir. I will. Yes. I'm going to uh, do some gardening. I think it's. I may change my pots out this week. All right. All right. I might. Yeah, I might. I might. They look good, though, but I might. I think I'm going to get a couple of things rocking and rolling for sure in the in the back landscape. Um, and I'll stop yeah. over and get some of that salsa. Well, well, that sounds well, good, baby. There. Well, enjoy that uh, garden fresh lunch you've got. Get some nice color you into too, your bro. garden in the week ahead. And thanks for listening to The Lazy Gardeners with Bobby Jensen and BT here on the Alive and Social Network. Stay lazy. Keep that cocktail cold. We appreciate it. Have a good day.